I saw them, and I was pushed towards John Lyman, actually, and I looked over and I'm like, you guys need a bread knife, so and I only lived two blocks down the road, so I went and got them a bread knife, and from there, I just, just kept going. All right, that's awesome, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I just kind of silly offended it, but, uh, so, so, yeah, just, again, just simple people doing simple stuff. He's got an incredible story, so I'm just saying. I'll just go. I'll just everything. All right. I'm not. I'm just going to keep this scene. Oh, okay. All right. This is Sean. <laughs> So my name is Sean Buzzle. I actually give my testimony every week for Team Challenge. We go to different churches and we sing three songs and um, three of us give our testimony and it's uh, three to five minutes, but it'll be a little extended this time. So um, I grew up in Turner, Maine. Um, very, very good family I came from. My mom and dad, they did the best to provide for me, the best they could to provide for me and my two older sisters. Um, my older sister, Leah, she had um, health problems with her weight, and then my uh, mother sister Brittany, she's also older than me, she had cancer when she was 6 and it came back when she was 20, she's 31 now and she's still on her mission, she still goes to the hospital once a year and gets checked up. And while growing up and my parents were dealing with my two sisters' uh, medical issues, I kind of felt like I was on the back burner, but I did, I did the best I could for my parents, I washed my dad's big rigs, I worked on the farm, and. Um, my mom worked part time and took care of my dad's paperwork and stuff, so I kind of felt like I was on the back burner. You know, Sean's all right. He can, he's working. You know, he's playing sports and he's all right. We don't really have to worry about him as much as my sisters and stuff. And so about sophomore year in high school, I was playing football for <coughs> area high school in Turner, and I got introduced to IV use steroids, and that's where. They say you can't get addicted to sports enhancement supplements, but that's a lie. I got addicted to the way, to the way it made me feel, to the way it made me perform better on the field. Um, and from that, I got myself hurt more often. So around junior year in high school, I got introduced to um, Percocets in the locker room. And from taking those, I could work out harder, I could play harder, I could just do better. And around senior year in high school, I got introduced to, um, I got introduced to uh, marijuana, a little later in high school than most kids usually do, and I got introduced to drinking and stuff. And so I graduated high school, and I had a I had a full scholarship, full full boat ride to go play football in the University of Maine, Orono, and I gave it up. I didn't I didn't go. I didn't want to wait two or three years to make the money that I could make moving to Lewiston. Um, selling the drugs that I was doing in high school, and so I did that. I, mo I moved to Lewiston. I was living what I thought was a good life, but there was always something missing. Always something missing inside. I was always trying to fill that. Um, two years went on doing that, living that lifestyle, and I met the mother of my two beautiful daughters right here, Neve and Tegan. Um, and, uh, me and her, we did good together. I hid my really hardcore addiction from her, but me and her smoke pot all the time, every day. Um, I, I hid my opiate use and my opiate addiction from her for a while, for at least five five years. And she found out that I was using opiates, and that threw me into depression. So I started using heroin, fentanyl heroin. And I started using an IV use because I knew that was the better, the better way to use it, the quicker way to use it. Um, and about two and a half years ago, um, me and her, we uh, mutually decided that it wasn't healthy. It wasn't a healthy relationship for my daughters or just, just for the household. For, for me to be in the household, always high, always using, for me to be around them, really. So about three years ago now, actually, I had... I put my daughters in bed for the last time as their at-home father. <clears throat> and that was one of, one of the hardest things I've ever done, was to walk away from them. I chose my addiction over my daughters. In 
and my rock bottom was at least two and a half years before I am where I am now. I found a very, very heavy use, heavy heroin use, um, to hide my depression, to hide my anxiety, to hide my fear, to hide my anger. I just didn't want to feel anything anymore. Nothing. So about ten and a half months ago, no, probably about a year ago now, I was walking through the Kennedy Park and I was on my way to go make a sale. And I saw a cell 53 in the middle of the park cooking burgers. And I got pushed towards pushed towards John. And they just they just opened their arms. First time. First time I actually felt welcome, you know. And I stuck around in cell 53 for at least two months. And I was still using I was using pretty heavy actually and um, three days before I entered Teen Challenge, I overdosed. I used that 9.30 in the morning and woke up the David Letterman show at 12.30 at night with EMTs over me. With, with, like, they revived me with Narcan. I was, I was out for almost 12 hours on my bathroom floor. It wasn't even my bathroom floor, it was my friend's bathroom floor, and he wasn't home. And I, uh, he came home from work and kicked the bathroom door down and saw me in my own mess. And I called my sister the next morning, bawling my eyes out, told her I needed help. And she asked me if I was still using it, and I said I was. And then there was about a 30 second pause. She started telling me she knew. She didn't, that I didn't have to lie to her anymore. The whole family knew that I was using it. I didn't even being blind, you didn't have the blinders on. I didn't even know that. I didn't know. I thought oh, I thought it was fine you know, around them and stuff. So, cell um, fifty three opened their arms, opened their doors, and the team challenge for, for the last three days. I stayed at Jeremy Brown's house one night. I had to get away from the mess. I had to get away from the mess, and they removed me from that mess. Then I stayed at Tanya and Matt's house for two days, and one morning I uh, got a phone call, not even knowing that they called Team Challenge. <laughs> Didn't even know. Uh, I knew that they called other places, but a guy named Tom Brown, he's no longer in the program, but he was a good mentor of mine while he was in the program. He graduated and moved on to, um, to do ministry work out of Philadelphia. And I talked to Tom Brown for about, oh, I don't know, a half hour that morning, and about four hours later, I was walking through the door of the Teen Challenge, and that's when my life began as a sober father and a sober man. And I've been there for 10 months now, and the miracles has brought my daughters back to my life in a sober manner. I actually never knew them sober, honestly. And it's the best thing in the world. Rebuilding the bridges that I lost with my family, I, I lied, cheated, and stole to my entire family while I was in my addiction, and they had totally lost their trust in me. I wasn't allowed at my dad's house, and I wasn't allowed at my mom's house. My sisters, neither one of my sisters would let me spend the night over there. Just nobody wanted me in their life. Nobody. And now that I've been in the program for 10 months, Team Challenge is starting to trust me now, and they put me in a leadership position in Team Challenge, and I'm running program development now. It's pretty much well, it's to develop the program, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but they call me the uh, the king of initiating. Yeah. Um. So I, I go. I go to now. I um. I go on fundraising. And I get to tell people what Team Challenge does to people, and what the best way Team Challenge does to people through God and Team Challenge. It's just an amazing program, and it's amazing what God did in my life as soon as He... I waited a long time for God to end my life. A long time. And that's the one verse I stand on. Lamentations 3.25. The Lord is the those who wait for Him, so He seeks Him. And I've waited for Him for 29 years. 
And now I'm gonna not I'm gonna I'm not gonna stop seeking them. I'm not gonna stop seeking them until the day I die. The relationship that we're gonna have, that we do have with Jesus and God right now, it's never a perfect relationship. It's never it's never complete. It's never complete until we're by his side. And that's what my one goal is to have a certain life, and that's why I'm doing what I need to do right now. Thank you.